All right, in this video, I want to talk about um, factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So uh, the leading coefficient is something other than a 1. But before we get to that, I just want to make sure we understand this idea of what it means to have something um, factored. So remember, factoring an expression means to write it as a product of other expressions. You know, we had, um, before we had something like x squared minus x minus 12, and we factored that into x minus 4 and x plus 3. All right, and so x minus 4 and x plus 3, those are called the factors of x squared minus x minus 12, and this is its factored form. It's a product, and that's the idea I want to make sure uh, that you have about factoring, that we're always writing our expression as a product. Even when we had something as simple as uh, 2x plus 8, and we rewrote that as 2 times x plus 4 by factoring out the greatest common factor, this is a product. 2 is one factor, x plus 4 is, is another factor, and so 2x plus 8 is written in this factored form. So it's a product of expressions. That's the whole idea on factoring something, is to write it as a product of other expressions. Right? So that's the idea to keep in mind. For factoring trinomials where that first coefficient is uh, something other than 1, okay, this time it's a 3, there are several ways to go about doing this. I'm only going to talk about one. I'm going to talk about the, the uh, idea of, um, essentially it's trial and error, right? And it involves understanding the idea of how to multiply binomials together, right? So, for example, here's how we kind of start. Once you practice this a little bit, then it can, it can become faster. There are some drawbacks. I'll talk about those later, right? But if, remember, if it's going to factor, it's going to factor into a binomial times a binomial. All right, now remember, we're going to put in um, two terms over here and two terms on the right one, right? And the idea is um, recalling how you multiply two binomials together, right? So the first term that we put in here uh, on the left and the first term that we put in here on the right one, they have to multiply up to 3x squared, right? So what are the options that can multiply up to 3x squared? Well, you could have a 3x here and an x here, because we know that 3x times x is 3x squared, right? Yes, you could have put x over here and 3x over here on the, on the right. It doesn't really matter, right? But with 3x squared, um, then the options are 3x in one of them and x in the other. And now, the, the last term, or the constant term, also comes from the product of the last two parts of the binomials, right? The second part's here, right? So, in this case, they'd multiply up to to 2. So your options for that are, are 1 and 2. Alright, so we could put, say, a 2 in here and a 1 in here. Alright, so this is one option that we have. Now remember, since this last sign is a plus, uh, these two signs down here are going to have to be the same sign. They, they're either both, both going to be positive or they're going to both be negative. Because remember, to get this last term, you're taking the second part of, the of each of the binomials and multiplying those together. So if they were both uh, negative, then you would have a, a negative times a negative, which would give you a positive 2. And if they're both positive, you would have um, a positive 2 as well. Right? They cannot be opposite signs here because this last sign is a plus. Right? So since um, this last sign is a plus, these would be the same sign, and they are whatever the sign of the middle term is. Right? In this case, it's plus. Now, here's where we have to do some, some quick math in our head, right? So, to figure out if this is the right combination, uh, we know 3x times x is 3x squared, and we know that 2 times 1 is 2. That's good. But now we need to figure out how to get the middle. Well, that comes from 3x times 1, which gives us 3x, and 2 times x, which gives you 2x. And when you add those together, you don't get 7x. Everybody see that? All right, so it's not 7x. So this is not the right combination for um, the factoring for this particular trinomial. All right, so we need to go, um, we need to try again. Okay, so uh, we did do 2 and 1, so now we know that we can try 1 and 2. Right? We have to switch the order around because, well, that's the only combination to give you a product of 2 is 1 and 2. Now we check it again. You have 3x times 2, which gives you 6x. 1 times x, which gives you 1x. 6x plus 1x is indeed 7x. So 3x plus 1 times x plus 2 is um, how we factor this original trinomial. 
right? Yeah, the first one is, is usually the worst one. It's like, what what just happened, right? So the uh, um, the idea, though, is to is to remember how to multiply binomials, and then you can start doing that in your head pretty fast to figure out if you have the right combination or not. Okay. Let's, try, let's try another one. All right, 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. All right, uh, there's no greatest common factor. I should have mentioned that in the previous one, but there's no greatest common factor. All right, so if there was, we could take it out. All right, since the leading coefficient here is something other than 1, we need to say, all right, well, let's look at our two binomials. All right, so the first things we put in here for each of the binomials has to multiply up to 2x squared. Well, you only have one option for that, 2x and x. So 2x and x gives you 2x squared. All right, and then you got 12 down here, and you need, you need uh, numbers that multiply up to 12. Well, we've got several options for that, right? You have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. So let's see. Uh, we're going to do a little work along the way to try to help eliminate some of these. If we do, if we do um, 1 and 12, then we'd see right away that regardless of the signs in the middle, you'd have 2x times 12, which is 24x, and a positive 1x. You're not going to get that to add or subtract up to 5. right? So 1 and 12 would not be a good uh, combination. Same idea with putting 12 over here, let's say, and 1 over here. You'd have 2x times 1 is 2x, and then 12x. 2x and 12x, you're not going to get that to add or subtract up to 5x either. So 1 and 12 here are not the numbers that we need. All right, so we have, what, 2 and 6? All right, so if you put in 2 and 6, all right, then you'd have 2x times 6 is 12x, and 2x, you're not going to get that to add or subtract up to 5 as well either, right? Okay, so what if we switched it around and had 6 over here and 2 over here? Right now you got 2x and 2, which is multiplied up to 4x, 4x, and then this is 6x, 4x and 6x. No combination is going to add or subtract up to give you 5x for that. So 6 and 2 aren't looking good either. All right. So what do we have left? 3 and 4. All right. So if we put in a 3 and a 4, what happens? All right. Well, we have 2x times 4, which gives you 8x, and 3 times x, which gives you 3x. And there is a combination for 8x and 3x to go to 5x. Since this last sign up here on the 12, since this last sign of the constant term is a minus, then these two signs down here still have to be opposite signs. One's a positive, one's a negative. But it's just not as easy to figure out how we did it with the um, uh, previous trinomials where the, where the a part up here, the leading coefficient part, was 1. All right, we have to do a little bit of math. All right, so we know that, that this times this gives you 8x, right? And we know that this times this gives you 3x, right? So if we want to get a positive 5x out, then uh, what do the signs have to be? Well, this has to be a plus, and this has to be a minus. Everybody see that? Right, because 2x times 4 gives you 8x. Negative 3 times x gives you negative 3x. We'll now make that a negative 3. And so then 8x and negative 3x give you a positive 5x. And then you got, of course, you still have the negative 3 times 4, which gives you negative 12. And you still have the 2x times x, which gives you 2x squared. So 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 is what this factors into. Everybody see that? Now again, with some practice, if you really try to practice this, you can eliminate some of those other ones that we um, did earlier. You can eliminate those pretty fast, right? So uh, even though it might seem a little cumbersome now, I encourage you to go ahead and, and practice it. Uh, so you'll just get faster at it. All right, uh, let's do uh, let's do another one. Six x squared minus twenty three x plus seven. All right, so if this is going to factor, we've got. 6x squared. So what can give us 6x squared? Well, x and 6x, 2x and 3x, right? So let's see, if you put in 6x and x, and then 7, well that's nice, because you have 1 and 7, that's it. So you could do 1 and 7, all right? And you can say 6x and 7 gives you 42, and then that gives you, um, 1 times x gives you x, there's no way that's going to go down to 23, so not a good combination, right? And even if you switch this around, 
and say this is 7 and this is 1, then we would have 6x times 1 is 6x, 7 times x is 7x, 6x and 7x is not going to give us a 23 either. Right, so it doesn't look like this combination is going to work. All right, so 6x and x didn't try. So now let's try 2x and 3x. 2x and 3x. And again, you got this um, 1 and 7. So you plug a 1 and a 7. We need 2x times 7 is 14. 1 times 3x is 3x. 14 and 3x isn't going to give us 23. All right, so that doesn't work. What about the other way? Well, if we put in a 7 and a 1, we get 2x times 1, which is 2x, 7 times 3x, which is 21x, and 21 and 2, they would get the 23, all right? Since this last sign is a plus, we know that, this, that the signs of the binomials have to be the same sign as the sign of the middle term. So these are both minuses. And we check it. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Negative 7 times 3x is negative 21x. Those two things add up to negative 23x. And then negative 7 times negative 1 gives you positive 7. So we have just factored our trinomial. All right, yeah, it's called trial and error because that's really what we're doing. We're doing some trial and error. Now, you can, um, that can get faster with practice, so I encourage you to do that. But the drawback here, is, obviously, is that, well, wh what if these numbers are really big? Like, we use 6, you know, and I think in a previous example I had 12. You know, but what if you had 24 as one of your numbers, or 48, you know, or 144? You'd have all these different combinations that could happen, right? So it's not, um, so that would not be very um, easy to do. Uh, it, trial and error would take a very long time. Now there are some other methods called the AC method or the factor by grouping method uh, that uh, you you may be learning in class. Um, I'm not going to worry about those methods, um, but if you need to, uh, I encourage you to go look those up, the AC method and the uh, factor by grouping method. They're, it's really the same thing, they just have a couple different names. I always re have referred to it as the AC method. And it's more of an algorithmic way to, to factor a, a trinomial where the leading coefficient is greater than 1. I'm not too worried about this in general. I'm more concerned that we understand what factors are, that um, rewriting our original expression as a product of factors, that, that's, that's the goal. The, this 2x minus 7 and this 3x minus 1, those are factors of our original polynomial. So I just want you to practice. Um, and uh, just so you have the idea of how to factor things. And some things like this can be fairly fast to, to factor if you've had some practice. But for those, we might have like 48x squared and you know 144 or something for the constant term where we're trying to factor all that mess out with, with all those different combinations. I'm not too concerned about um, you worrying about those types of polynomials, being able to factor those types of polynomials. Right? So um, don't, don't sweat over that. All right, that's for my class, but if you're uh, in another class where the instructor is emphasizing uh, that, being able to factor those, then you need to go learn how to factor those. Like I said, um, there are a couple other methods um, to, help you, uh, to help you figure out how to, how to factor that. All right, so that's all I want to say about factoring uh, trinomials where the leading coefficient is something other than 1. So uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.